We want to empower the American public to stand up and rise in defense of our security, our liberty, and our values. And I want to end on, a, on this short point. I want to thank each one of you for preparing a country for an immigrant like me to come to this great nation of ours. I want to thank you for exercising your freedom of speech, your freedom as an American to vote, to participate in our public policy, to work in America's economy, to prepare a great nation for immigrants like me who come to America, who believe America is God's gift to the universe, who wake up every morning thanking God we made it to the promised land. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to live freely as a free person in the land of the free and home of the brave, where I as a woman can rise to everything I can be, can accomplish, can work, can prosper, and be protected when I speak my opinion and my, let my opinion have some value. I want to thank those of you who served in our military. I humbly and gratefully bow before you and thank you. Our freedom is built upon your sacrifice. I thank your parents who raised you. I thank those who loved you. I thank your loved ones who sent you to war and stayed here so you can go fight to protect our nation. We are not who we are as the greatest nation in the world without your sacrifice. I urge you today to rise in defense of America. I urge you today to go to actforamerica.org and sign up to join us. And I urge you to get they must be stopped, why we must defeat radical Islam, and how we can do it, and pass it to everybody who cares about our country. God bless you, and God bless America. And I open it for questions. I would anticipate we do have some questions. If you would please wait, we have mics available. If you'll give your name as a courtesy to our guest speaker, we will rec I'll let you recognize them, I assume. Okay. All right? Yes, go ahead. Al Milliken, American Independent Writers. What do you see as the proper approach for uh, Muslim and Christian dialogue, uh, and in particular, how do you think that this, uh, the Crusades should be approached? Do you think uh, Christians apologizing for Crusaders of the past is wrong or weak or immoral? Uh? I'm going to answer your question in the order you asked it. How can we positively engage in dialogue with the Muslim community? We must engage the Muslim community, the moderate community. We must show them how they're going to be victimized as much as we are if the radicals drive the agenda and win the debate at the end of the day because they're going to lose as much as we lose. And give them the examples of what happened in Iran, what happened in Afghanistan, what's happening in areas, in Islamic areas where the Muslims are taking over. We need the moderates to stand up and be counted empty rhetoric telling us they are our friends is not enough they have got to do something to organize if I as a mother as a wife as an American citizen can start an organization out of my guest bedroom and today have 200 people in America 200 chapters in America and thousands of people mobilized to resist the advance of radicalism in our community you're gonna tell me that since September 11th there is not one Muslim millionaire in the world who could put some money behind an Islamic movement to get the money moderates together and fight the radicals, this is the point we need to drive to the moderates. As to the apologizing for the Crusades, no, we should absolutely not apologize for the Crusades. The Crusades would have never been launched. The Crusades would have never been launched if it wasn't for the Muslims taking, butchering, and slaughtering Islamic lands, and the Crusades went after, they, after them to liberate them. I will say that I do apologize for the Crusades killing the Jews and the way they did to not only the Muslims, but to the non-Muslims and the way they killed. But you know what? When you look back at that period in history, this is how wars were done. Now, that does not justify or make any apologies for the Crusades. The Crusades were a, a resistance 
movement that came as an answer to Islam that killed millions of people. Islam is a religion that killed 270 million people across the globe, more than any other group of people or empire or na nation has ever killed. And today in particular, we are facing nations in Islam who are building nuclear bombs. Ahmadinejad is our modern day Hitler, except we have now Ahmadinejad with nukes. This is something we cannot take a chance on. Next question. Yes. Hey, so good to see you again. Yeah, your speech was great, as always. Thank you. Um, my understanding is that the, the Muslims are, when they're building the mosque, that they have some strategy where they're planting them all over in Jewish neighborhoods. And I was wondering if, if that's part of the Muslim Brotherhood plan, and what do you think the reason for that would be? They are planting them every way they can plant them. Now, it is easier for them to build them in Jewish neighborhoods because Jews in general are tolerant and understanding, and they will be more likely to put the least resistance. They're not going to have any resistance building a mosque in a Jewish community than they're going to have resistance building a mosque in a good old boy neighborhood in Oklahoma City. So that's the reason why you see more mosques built in Jewish neighborhoods instead of Christian neighborhoods. However, they are trying to build them anywhere they face the least resistance.